to Hang Gliding 101. This is what I hope is going to be a series of videos where I talk about various different issues that affect hang gliding, various little snippets, various tips uh, and things about the hang glider if you want to know. Uh, I hope you like it, if you do like it, if you have any ideas of what you'd like to see in hang gliding 101, then just put some comments down below. Uh, my first series, or my first thing on the Hang Gliding 101 that I'm going to talk about is motivation, and specifically, motivation to hang glide. When you first start hang gliding, the, uh, it's very easy to be highly motivated, it's brand new to you, you're desperate to learn, you've, you've, you've been running off a hill and you're flying for the first time, and that motivation is going to be sky high. And then, as you uh, progress through your flying career, you might find that you get quite proficient, you're soaring along nicely, and maybe you start to get a little bit bored of it. Uh, so how do you actually maintain that motivation and that desire to fly? I think that uh, I've got this pretty well licked. I've been flying for over 20 years now, and I am still well motivated to fly. I absolutely love it. But there have been periods in my flying career when I haven't been. I went for about five or six years where I hardly flew at all. Uh, so I'm going to share with you my thoughts on how to stay motivated. So, this motivation business works whether you're hang gliding, whether you're cycling, weight training, knitting, whatever it is, I think that if you've got some sort of a hobby, uh, at some point you may well become a bit disillusioned, a little bit fed up, a little bit bored. And this is about how do you motivate yourself. Well, one thing I found in life is when you have a goal, something to aim for, something that's challenging but it's achievable, and you work towards that goal, then you're motivated to do it. And you want to do it, you want to achieve your goal. So one of the things is about having goals. I'll talk about that more in a little minute. The other thing I'm thinking is when something is new, when something's brand new to you, you really want to do it, to, to try it, to get good at it, to understand it, to, to enjoy it. So having something that's new, hang on, just a bit of thermal, let's break off of this, hang on. there. So when something's new, it's interesting, it's exciting, you want to do it. So those are two things, having goals and having that newness. But you're a seasoned hang glider pilot by now, how do you keep it new? And what do you do about those goals? So the first thing is in terms of the goals. So I, what I do and what I think is a good idea is to set yourself a longer term goal, something to aim for over the long term. So one of my long term goals is to be the British National Hang Gliding Champion. That's, what, that's my stated goal, I want to win the British National Championships. Uh, and by doing that, I guarantee myself a place on the British team for World Championships and European Championships. So that's one of my goals, longer term. Another longer term goal is just to guarantee myself a place on that European Championship or World Championship British team without necessarily winning the British Championships. So that's, those are like two of my, not my only ones, but two of my longer term goals. So then what do you do about those? Well then it's a question of having smaller goals in between. Uh, so for example, the top three in a competition, flying across country over a certain distance, flying any cross country, getting over a certain height, um, tidying up my landings, they'll win landings, so they'll win landings are good. So having a series of these smaller goals to work towards the bigger goals. Like I say, for me, there's a, a number of goals that I might have, small goals to get towards that bigger goal. 
coming in, in the top three in a Cat 2 competition. That's one of them. Uh, doing uh, a 100 mile cross country, that's another one. In fact, doing any cross country over 50 miles, or any cross country indeed, that's always uh, one of my goals. Another goal is to uh, bring more people into the sport, and that's what I'm doing hopefully with YouTube. So you've got all these longer term goals, and then the smaller goals to help with them. And then every time you go flying, you look at the conditions of the day, and you look at the location, and you say, what can I achieve out of my goals today? So today is um, fairly light conditions at the image. Oh, hang on, hang on. <laughs> fairly lightish conditions, or it was. 13 miles an hour uh, wind now. You have to use the thermals to stay up. The uh, inversion is stopping you from getting any higher than around about 2,000 feet, maybe a little bit higher. That's the maximum I've got so far. So it's not really high enough to do a cross country. Um, so what, how can I achieve my goals today? Well, by doing this by practicing my thermal techniques and oh, talking to you instead of concentrating on all these making nice thermals but yeah by practicing my thermal techniques by seeing how high I can get by seeing uh, where I can fly away from the where you would expect the normal lift to be on the ridge and getting back up again so trying to identify locations other than just the, uh, the ridge that you're on for where a thermal might kick off and use that to get up like you would on a cross country flight. So practicing those cross country skills. Other things that you might try are how far away from the ridge can I get and get back again? And how low can I get back and still get back up again? You've got to be prepared to go down and land at the bottom if you're going to do that. But, uh, or you have a safety margin built in where you say I'm not going to be any lower than this. That's another thing you can try. Uh, practice your top landings. So if you find somewhere where you can top land and easily take off again, let's practice those top landings just to improve that confidence in landing ability. And so when you land, you feel a lot more confident about it. Practice your bottom landings. You might go on a day where there's, it's not uh, particularly good. And you might just have a small hill where you run up down the hill practicing those bottom landings, practicing those light wind landings and that big flare. So there's loads and loads of stuff that you can do, loads of small goals that you can do to move towards your big goals. And every time you do that, if you're flying with a focus, that's what I would say, fly with a focus, don't just soar along aimlessly. If you're flying with a focus, you'll be concentrating on that your interest level will be kept up uh, and you'll want to do it more and you'll be trying to improve each time. Can I get a little bit higher? Can I fly a little bit further? Can I get that landing a little bit more clean, a little bit more graceful? Can I improve that landing approach? So many different things. So each time you fly, concentrate on a different aspect of your flight. Of course, your goals might be different to mine. You might not want to be on the British team. You might not even be British. Uh, but whatever your long-term goals are, have a think about it. Have a think about what do I want to achieve long-term? Uh, what can I do to achieve it? And each day when you go flying, what am I going to do today that gets me towards those goals? So that's one of the aspects of maintaining motivation, having goals. The other thing I talked about was doing things that are new to you. So there's lots of things you can do here as well. One of them is going to new and varied sites. If you go to the same site all the time, you take off, you fly there, you get to know that site intimately, that's great, you become very good at that site, but it does maybe become a little bit boring. So if, you, if you're able to, go to different flying sites. What else can you do? You can learn different sorts of flying. So something I've been doing over the last couple of years, in addition to learning how to uh, leap off a hill and hill fly, I've learned winch tour, that static winch tour, and also aero tour. 
So those are new skills to me and just the fact of doing something new is really exciting, really interesting and has kept my motivation up. Uh, what else might you try? Um, new things, spot landing. So pick a spot, try and land on that spot, put a bag in the, in the field where you're going to land, try and land on that spot. Just new things that you can think to incorporate into your flight and make it interesting each time. So, that's my thoughts on how to stay motivated when you're flying. And like I said before, that applies to any sport, any hobby that you've got. Uh, have those goals, try to keep it new and look at those short term goals, those little things you can do each time you do your sport or hobby that progresses you along to those goals and keep that focus in your mind and if you do that you're going to keep your motivation up but above all the one biggest thing especially with flying I would say is you need to every once in a while just pinch yourself and remind yourself what an absolute privilege it is to be in the air flying I mean I'm like a bird I'm flying like a bird this is amazing and just remind yourself of that that not everybody gets to do this and it is such an amazing sport that there's nothing like it and whatever your sport is I'm sure your sport or hobby is like that for you so just remind yourself of how great it is on a regular basis and that way you'll stay motivated so that's my first episode of hang gliding 101 I hope you enjoyed it I hope you find it interesting if you do put some comments below and give me some ideas for other things that you might like to uh, like, might like me to talk about. I do have a few ideas and I'll be putting some stuff on over the next weeks and months. Uh, hopefully you like it. Thank you very much.